Hello, this is Sean Shaw with Dinner and Dialogue yet again. Thank you for tuning in. We have Mr. Terrell Hill from a number of shows that you may be familiar with. We have The Quad, we have Being Mary Jane, we have Tales, uh, the most recent project, and then we have uh, Acrimony that's in, in theaters now, and do you have another one coming out uh, soon? Uh, yeah. Tell a little bit more about about what you got going on and kind of a little bit about who you are because I know when they first saw you on camera it's like wait a minute is that Chris <laughs> you know is that Chris Breezy you know damn then the dialogue came up <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, sorry to disappoint but no uh, a lot a lot a lot less going on than that <laughs> <laughs> right now maybe right now but man I, I would love working with him one day uh, but anyway the quad being Mary Jane Tales Star Blue Bloods Step Up Cobra Kai, um, Bad Mom's Christmas, Forever My Girl, right now Love, Simon and Acrimony in theaters. Merry Wishmas comes out, TV One later on this year, and wow. Superfly comes out in June. So wow. it's been a really, really cool run. Yeah, a really cool run. I mean, I already know who's paying for this tab. I mean, cause you just, <laughs> you just rounded off about 10 projects and you only been in the business since like, what, two years? Yeah, I actually did start acting. Well, I started acting long before I booked my first show. I booked my first show a month before I graduated from Clark in 2016. Okay. But I've been auditioning for years before that, and I don't know. God was like, "You about to leave school? Here you go. Let's get it going." And it's been good. Okay. Now, have you always wanted to be in film, or did you study that in school, or this just kind of always out? wanted to be involved in film in some capacity? Mm -hmm. So. Growing up in Moreno Valley, I didn't think acting was a possibility. So mm -hmm. even though I was very interested and I was always open to doing things like that, I always felt like my actual calling in film would be writing and directing. Okay. So I went to film school, Clark's Film Department specifically, okay. for undergrad. And right now I'm in Full Sail University's creative writing program for my master's. Nice. Um, I got put in a position where I needed to be in front of the camera, and okay. I had never felt that comfortable in my life. Oh, nice. So it's a natural fit for you. I uh, guess so. I yeah. guess so. It felt yeah. really good, and after a couple of independent projects and a couple of my own films that I shot on my own merit, okay. assignments, of course, in school where they needed people to be in front of the camera and behind mm -hmm. the camera, I found that the film industry was something that was undeniable. and. I felt comfortable behind the camera or in front, so I was cool with it. And now, my ultimate goal is to like, you know, be able to dynamically shift between Ryan Coogler and Michael B at any given moment. You know okay, what I mean? yeah, that's, yeah. That's kind of what the goal is. I want to be right. able to direct, I want to be able to write, I want to be able to act. Okay. Okay, it's going well so far. I, uh, yeah, I would say, I would say. Now, is there a particular um, uh, show that you've done or in the in the process of doing that you would say resonates more and is more like who Terrell is? Or, or is that just kind of not, not the case? No, no, it's not that it's not the case. Um, the bigger projects that I've been affiliated with, mm -hmm. for example, the quad, I went to an HBCU and we actually shot most of the quad on campus okay. at Clark. Yeah. So, uh, or in the AUC more specifically. Sure, sure. Um, but I was nothing like the character I played, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not really in the mm -hmm. fraternity. So uh, when you book these bigger projects when you're first starting off, mm -hmm. whether your role is big or not, you don't really have much say so over the role. It's not like I can call someone and right. like, tell them to write my story. Like I'm, I'm essentially nobody right now. Um, Far so from that, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I guess the independent game is what I do in my off time. And mm -hmm. I've shot a lot of independent projects that are okay. coming out, that are really big, that I'm really excited for, that I think fit more who I am. Nice. Rather than uh, the bigger projects. And I'm grateful for both, but the independent game is like, I feel like something I, I've always felt extremely comfortable with. Okay. I never question that. Okay, awesome. Tough decision. <laughs> Um, we also have one on um, Cult of Bella Lugosi is Dead, the chef is ready as a special. Uh, that, that one, it's not on there, it's a special. So Bella Lugosi was the original vampire. We're going to kill like a vampire, you need plenty of garlic. So you've got garlic coffee, it has spicy salami on it, roasted tomatoes, and oregano. That sounds really good. 
but I think I want the Spicoli special. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. Enjoy. Hey, you want some? No, I'm good. You sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. All right, cool. Funny why you don't care. Yeah, eating. Oh, it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. I know you're hungry, but you know. Any initial thoughts other than it's fire? Yeah. <laughs> Literally. It's really good though. I like it. Now do you cook at all or are you just Man, I cook everything I eat. I rarely go out. Oh, really? I'm okay. Cheap. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not yeah. because you can really cook. Yeah, I cook. I cook. I grew up cooking, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, like almost every night. It was like past time. Oh, all right. I'll even when nice you're How do I do this? Okay. even when you're in school. Oh, not as much. First couple of years of college, I went to the calf, but it was most okay. of my friends was there. Right. So when the refund check hit, I was like, Okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. It was cool. What's up, man? You sure you don't want none of this? No, I'm good. You sure if this is nice? No, no, I'm good. All right. It's all about you and, and you enjoying the enjoying the meals or whatever. You know what I mean? Cool. I recently just um, got to work with Ron Rico Lee. Oh, he directed nice. his first project, and it was a short film written by Jesse T. Usher, uh, who's playing the new Shaft, and Alan Maldonado, who's yes. his last OG in Blackish. They all came together. Um, and shout out to my homegirl, Adrian, who's also in the project. She gave me an opportunity. Well, she didn't throw me, she didn't give me an opportunity. She threw me a lot. She was like, they needed somebody to play the lead role. She told them about me. I had the audition, and I booked it, and now, I'm a part of something huge, and the short film is amazing. It's called The Father's Love. Okay. I'm extremely honored to just be amongst all these people. It was Ron's first time directing. It was Jesse's writer's debut, collaborating with Alan, who writes a lot. But just being amongst these people, I've been put around a lot of people that I grew up watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good segue. Yeah. The next project that I'm working on right now is a project called Masters. It's a feature film written by Alicia Kauser and Khalil Kane. Khalil Kane is also the director. This is his first project, and Khalil Kane was Raheem in Juice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And he's also playing my dad. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so surreal. Terry J. Vaughn is my mother in the project. Uh, so, that's okay. like, I grew up watching all three of them. So, this is insane to even just be in this space right now. Yeah. But that project is so much fun. Eric Mena, um, Bilal Robinson, Elijah, uh, Elijah Johnson. Man, it's so much fun. Oba Baba Tunde. Mmm. Mmm. I mean, man, what can um, you say? It's what amazing. can you say, man? And the fact that I'm the leader of the project, it's a lot of pressure, but it's also so much fun. Yeah. Because I always wanted yeah. to play a role to where I feel like I feel like a lot of the roles that I've played have been cool, mm -hmm. been very important, some of them. But this is one where I know that like, oh, you know, like this, Terrell, you matter in this project. Like, yeah, you, you matter in this project. This, it's so much fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. Working with them has been a dream. Yo, man, I, I took I took Raheem to Chick Fil A. I mean, that was cold. Like, that was dope. And then we went to Whole Foods, and he put me on non-fluoride vegan toothpaste. And I was okay. like, I ain't no toothpaste had pork. Oh, like, okay. wow, <laughs> was like, damn, turn me on to something. It was having like, a lot of fun, man. And, and okay. shooting it has been a really dope experience, especially since I come from behind the scenes. Okay, yeah. I work in production, camera eye, directing, and stuff that I love to do. So to be on a set where everybody's kind of just stepping into something new. Mm -hmm. It's it's really beautiful to watch us make it through all the pitfalls that come with independent filmmaking. Yeah. Um, last minute changes and then just watching us just mm -hmm. step up to the plate. It's yeah. very inspiring. It's really cool and I can't wait for you to see that. Okay. That's and when when is that really fun. when is that slated to to debut? It's a really good question. Okay. Um, we're so close to finished. Okay. 
it shouldn't be too hard to edit. There's not like a bunch of fight sequences or anything like that. Okay, okay. I personally would like to see it at the end of summer because gotcha. I am uh, overly anxious and that's probably unrealistic because it is a full length feature film mm. and there's a lot of things that go into editing a feature film, scoring, licensing, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I would like to see it in August. Okay. I don't know if it's going to be out in August, ready in August, none of that stuff, but it's pretty, pretty simple, not simple, it's, it's, it's a pretty strong operation they have going on. Yeah. So, I don't foresee anything else happening that would hold up production, not with the people that we have here, you know? Okay. Very excited about that. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, what else do you think that you like to do uh, in the next year or two? I mean, you have all these projects up, I mean, do you think you would just step off and just say, let me just do my directing thing, let me just, let me just do that? So I wrote a feature film last year. Okay. And Ron Rico decided he agreed to directing it. Okay. So if all goes according to plan, if all goes according to plan, and he doesn't book something that has him too busy. Right. Ron Rico is going to be directing the film that I wrote. Oh, nice. Feature. I'm super excited. I want to talk about it, but mm -hmm. it's, it, it talks about Alzheimer's. And, okay. Um, I, I just, I'm so excited. Yeah. There's so many possibilities. I feel like a lot of great things can happen, and I'm glad that I've put myself in a position where if I'm not working, I'm keeping myself busy with other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, man, staying in as good a shape. Don't pay attention to this. It's, right. It's pizza. <laughs> every uh, it's okay. Uh, it's okay every now and then. Yeah, every now and then. <laughs> I haven't had pizza in a month and a half. But um, yeah, just staying busy, um, staying happy. Mm -hmm. I would love to book a series right now. I'm hoping okay. when one of these shows that I'm going to get renewed for another season. Yeah. But you, you've been on Star. Yeah. Okay, which just kind of I'm not. Up. I'm not going to come back to Star. No. My character died. Oh, man. But yeah, it was so much. Out. Star was so <laughs> cool. Luke James is one of the coolest people I've ever met. Lance Gross is dope. The whole cast, they're yeah. just gorgeous and talented. It is just like a really good energy to be around. Yeah. yeah but it's yeah. not Star. Uh, okay. I don't want to say it and then they watch it and feel obligated. But right, no, no, I understand. Step I understand. up. Okay. Stop playing, step up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when Step Up comes out, I would like to come back. I don't care if it's a series regular or not, but okay. that show is amazing. Yeah. Neo, Naya Rivera, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. R. Marcos Taylor. I mean, the whole squad, all the younger people, Lauren, Patrice, KO, what up? There's yeah. so many people in the cast I'm just so cool with. Jade, uh, Terrence, Mar Marcus, bro. Like, everybody's so talented, so cool. Being on that set is just inspiring. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. every time I go, I'm learning to do dance and I can't even dance. I'm just like, how do you do that? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I want to come back. A dream would be a series regular on a project like that. Okay. But to be honest with you, I think my major goal is to make a certain amount of money and stay happy doing it. That's yeah. my goal for 2018. Just okay. to stay happy and continue uh, growing my financial territory that God has for me. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. The majority of my fan base are women. And I know they're probably thinking, is he single? Is he single? Is he going to say something about that? I know that you're recently uh, in a relationship. Uh, yeah, um, we're not together until, anymore. Okay. Girl, that's my queen. It's the okay. homie. It's my best friend. But okay. we're not romantically involved. We're not there no more. Okay. She's okay. cool though. Like, we're, yeah. we're, we're really good friends. I am single. Okay. All right. You're single. All right. We're good. Good, good, good. I know you want to, you're young. You're like, what, 23? 24. I just turned 24. 24. Okay. Yes. So he's uh, Young guy coming into the game and 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 turning heads and making an impact and I, I like how you approach uh, the business and and selecting the roles that you play. It's more strategic because oftentimes some people get typecast. Oh yeah, if you will. And I've seen it happen and and, and you'll see someone in a movie and you're like, man, they're playing that same type of character, <laughs> that same role. It's tough because. Yeah. I talk to a lot of adults, a lot of my mentors and stuff. I've booked a quantity of roles in the last 18 months. 
So quantity-wise, I might have played the same amount of roles as one of my mentors played in the span of 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's scary because it seems like it's just a lot going on at one time. A lot of, uh, I don't know, it, it's, I'm in free fall right now. I don't know what's going to happen because it yeah. seems like it's an overload and people are going to get tired of seeing me or, you know, I'm going to, all these tough guy roles are going to come out at one time. Like in January, stepped up, step up, forever my girl, Blue Bloods, and, and the quad came back in the span of six days. Okay. okay. And it was just like so much going on it was like so much i'm posting about so much and it was just like i can't believe i'm on four different projects yeah. right now yeah you know what i mean yeah. so it's it's you got to be strategic you have mm -hmm. to be strategic you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. it's yeah it's overwhelming to think about yeah i can imagine i can imagine so what what does your family say about this uh this huge success that's just kind of came out of nowhere um do you, have, you know, do you have brothers or sisters? Or I do. Single? I do. I have my uh, older brother who's uh, just booked a Broadway play in Philly. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm super proud of him. Uh, he's an opera singer. Wow, okay. But other than, me and him were like the first two to really go to college in our entire family. So mm -hmm. whenever we go home, it's, it's always, it, it's overwhelming. Yeah. It's different. I'm getting stopped for pictures a lot now. Yeah. Especially when I'm home, because when I came home, Acrimony was just out. And okay. Life Simon was just out also. Okay. So, so like maybe two weeks ago, I was getting stopped at Food for Less, and in the mall, and Applebee's, and it's just like... Right. It's crazy, man. Right? Yeah, I can imagine. It, it's insane. And especially since in my head, I wasn't even like a big character in this, but at the same mm -hmm. time, in Moreno Valley, there really ain't nobody on TV like that. Yeah, yeah. So. I guess that was enough for a lot of people to be impressed and it feels really good to like know how proud my people back home are. Right. I just want to keep keep delivering on that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not enough, it's not enough to just be having great things going on. You have to follow up. You know? mm -hmm. I don't view myself as successful because I haven't put my family in a financial position where they are better off. Right. The projects are dope, but be honest with you, they don't pay as much as people probably think they pay. Yeah, yeah. I Even feel off that you got taxes and representatives you gotta pay as well. Absolutely. So whatever check you get, you don't get you you might see twenty to thirty, forty percent of it. Right. And um, right. it's enough for you, but it's not enough for everybody you care about. That's true. Now have you ever thought about uh, and I know you've said you've done some some things on an independent uh, tip. Have you ever thought about leveraging social media um, kind of like the YouTube to kind of produce your own thing, kind of going in that, that, that I route. have. I got my official acting start on an official TV show back in college. It was called, it was a web series called uh, College Boyfriends. It was pretty much about these, these guys mm -hmm. who all had a relationship with other girls on campus. And, it was kind of shot reality show style, okay, but not exactly. It was very fictional. It was not real. Mm -hmm. I hope I said I hope I use the right fictional because that'd be really embarrassing to watch that. Anyway, <laughs> it wasn't real. I mean, I, the character for me was Demario Watkins, uh -huh. um, and his storyline was very deep. I had a very deep storyline, but it went on for three seasons. I did over like. 30, 40 episodes, an hour long each, and that was produced right there at Clark and in Atlanta. And we shot it, it was, it, we've, we've done that before. And okay. even even to this day, I still produce a long time. I directed a short not too long ago. Um, it won a few awards, got nominated for like 11. That was when I was a senior, and I just finished directing my friend's series, Prequel to Life Crisis. I think that's gonna be a really good show. Hopefully it comes out later this year when we finish editing it. So, you know, we, we still move when we're not working in the actual on TV movie realm, you know? Right. We're still, we're still moving on. Who, who would you most like to collaborate with, whether it be on a directing tip, acting, co-writing, executive producing, anything like that? Is there anyone now that you would say, man, I would really, really, like to work with them? 
solely based on interviews, not even the work. Okay. Ryan Coogler. Okay. Okay. And because um, my whole first essay in college was about Ryan Coogler. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's the funny thing before Black Panther and everything, and even my first master's paper was about Ryan Coogler. That sounds a little creepy, but it's not like it wasn't. It was all strictly about the work and the background. I feel like yeah. I grew up similar. I feel like we come from a uh, situation that mm -hmm. is uh, tough. Yeah. So, based off of how he's just unapologetically himself, like I'm from California, I ain't from Oakland. Mm -hmm. Mama from Oakland. Yeah. She moved to Compton, met my dad, who was in Watts, and I was born in LA. So, yeah. for me, you know, I feel like I hear that and I see that in him. I see his neighborhood in his interviews. I see that he's not changing who he is because of the budgets that are being thrown about him, the people that are being placed around him. He seems like someone I just want to, if nothing else, talk with. Yeah. So if some work could ever come up, that's dope. But if not, yo, how you been? Let's talk about, right. let's talk about Fruitvale and how you were able to garner a budget or who you met, just to know, mm -hmm. just to know. You yeah. know, I don't want nothing from no one. Right. I don't want no right. right now, Absolutely. Yeah. Even like we talk about UAP Newman, I wouldn't want to be offered that role. There's so many right. great people for that role. Mm -hmm. Let me earn it. Yeah. But I would, I guess collaborating would be, ain't really up to me, but I definitely want to meet Ryan Cooper. That, that yeah. probably seems like, that seems like some other way. We're going to make that happen. We're going to make that happen on here on Dinner Dialogue. No, no. That's cool. <laughs> now, that's in your Instagram, and we'll talk a little bit more about social media, but in your most re one of your posts, you talked about some of the challenges that you've faced uh, in this industry. You know, it's kind of, kind of serious because uh, it's touched upon kind of depression and, and some of the things that you've gone through. Can you kind of expound upon that and and just kind of give us your story. Absolutely. Um, Instagram is like a highlight reel. So when I post something, that's exactly what it's intended. I'm not supposed to tell everybody everything that's going on. And for a really big part of the last couple of years, I wouldn't talk about negativity because I'm not the type to vent on social media. Not that there's something wrong with people that do that. I personally choose not to, and that's what that is. Um, so if I decided to post that, which I did, it was with the intentions to help. Um, I did book a lot last year, uh, but it didn't stop me from being clinically depressed and being on antidepressants. And I've been dealing with depression since 12 years old. Uh, my first counseling session was after my parents got divorced. And um, I wasn't in there for depression per se, I was in there because my parents were divorced, we were trying to work through it, but I found myself hanging out with a lot of counselors and just going to the counselor's office to talk every single lunch during high school, for the most part, just because uh, my friends couldn't understand him, um, especially this last year, a lot of my friends couldn't understand because I was doing pretty well as far as booking projects and having things going on. I think the misconception is just because you're achieving things that everything is all right. I try to open my mouth and talk to somebody who wasn't a shrink. And all they would say is, what's wrong with you? You're booking. And that led to um, feeling like emasculated in a sense, like, man up, Terrell, stop complaining about nothing. You're on set right now. Perk up. You just worked with so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, but it, it was a lot of negativity, a whole lot of negativity. And it's still a, a challenge. If you know anything about a neurological disorder or a chemical imbalance or anything, it's that a lot of times you can't really choose what it is you're thinking about. A lot of people you choose to be happy, but it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds when it's literally something you can't choose. Things are triggered, things are repressed, and then you go through what you go through mentally. And you have to have those escapes. Unfortunately, last year I didn't have them. It was probably as bad as it had gotten since early high school. Mm. But I'm good. I did go to counseling. I mean, I've been in counseling. I've not taken 
you know, sleep medication or any of that other stuff that I might have needed. I found my resources. I decided I was going to continue on with my master's program regardless of whatever this career does for me. I, you know, I started doing things that made me happy because a lot of the time I felt like a piece just being moved places or, you know, struggling with identity and things of that issue. Like, I, like identity in the sense of trying to remind people all the time that I'm not somebody else. That is a constant thing. Like, yeah. um, you know, for example, like when you're on TV, it's not like back in the 70s. I have mentors that talk about being like, I won't name drop, but one of my mentors was really big in like the 80s. He's still big today, but his biggest hits was like the 80s and the 90s. It was just over and over, just boom, boom, blockbuster, blockbuster. And it was tough because he couldn't go nowhere, but he didn't have to deal with the comments and stuff that people say on social media. And of course, people tell you, if you can't handle it, you can't handle it. But they couldn't really handle it back then. They didn't have to deal with it. Uh, when you had a good project, people were most concerned with the project. And they talk about how good you did or how good you didn't do. And that was that. It was an opinion. But now people will just take jabs at you and things that you can't control. Sometimes it's your looks. Sometimes it's... It's just stupid stuff. And I think they make the mistake in believing that, you know, we don't see it. For me, I would like to know if I did good or not, and not just be turned into a joke. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I book a show and that means that I got Twitter talking trash about me. And it has nothing to do with my performance or who I'm playing or none of that stuff. It just is what it is. And um, being honest, some, sometimes, most times, it's Chris Brown related. I'm a huge fan, no negativity at all, but essentially I'm just like the downgraded version of him a lot of times online. If I'm being completely honest. Mm -hmm. And I've never met him before. I'm a huge fan. I want to work with him, his brother or whatever. I want to be a stand-in. I want to be his brother or something on the project. I want to meet him. Yeah. Uh, I've heard his name every day since seventh grade, so why not? But on a serious level, um, it's a conflict between your passion, something that you know for a fact gives you gives you that that thing you feel like you've been missing your entire life, that comfort in knowing that you're good at something and you want to take pride in it, but also what comes with that in this in this age of millennialism and social media, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, not that that was the thing that's making me depressed. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure, <laughs> it sure, just, sure. Yeah. It just, it's just it's one of those contributors and again for a lot of people they just want the attention that comes with being on TV and in movies right right do they, you you know do you think that social media has <clears throat> helped perpetuate some of the things that you've gone through and the feelings that you have either by you know because sometimes social media a lot of people look for affirmation people mm. look for acceptance yeah people want to I, personally, I don't give it that much value. Mm -hmm. If I'm required to live tweet, then I'm just gonna see stuff I don't wanna see, and that's just is what it is. Yeah. But for the most part, I don't post a whole lot. I post, my social media is more of a business outlet. When I was in DC, I posted a flyer about the fact that I was on a panel for DC, and I had some of the people that followed me show up, took pictures, I answered a lot of questions, I gave all my emails, and I've been communicating with like four or five people who were in the crowd. Mm -hmm. That's a positive thing about social media. Yeah. Um, projects, networks follow you, they want to see what you have going on. Mm -hmm. And it's beneficial to show that there are things going on and you want to support, you want to connect with people from the past or connect with people that you might want to work with in the future. It's a great outlet. Yeah. But still, I only have about 40,000 followers on IG. So imagine what the people Every single minute of the day, somebody is on your page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is insane to think about. It's normal now, but think about the idea that every minute of the day, somebody is sending you a message, sending you an email, clicking the link in your bio. It's a lot, and that's not going on with me. It's going on with some of my friends. Right. And right. You have to just kind of get mentally prepped for stuff like that. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um, and I'm mentally ready, I feel like, but at the same time, if, if those triggers do start to happen, I may need to duck off for a little bit. Just yeah. sit with myself and, and reevaluate some things as far as 
how to avoid putting myself in the mindset and not giving too many people power um, and remembering mine. And that's kind of how I've managed to break out of that mental state before. It wasn't something that's been so detrimental that I couldn't shake it off before right. and this time too. But this time I couldn't take the steps that were necessary to do it because I was filming every single month. Right. So I needed the medication to sleep. I needed I needed to have a counselor I can call at any hour of the night mm -hmm. because I'm by myself and mm -hmm. I can't talk to anybody. Nobody understands. Nobody if I'm if I'm talking to one person, they can't completely understand what's going on as far as why I would be complaining in the first place. Kind of making me feel stupid for it. Right. It ended up in the first place. And then right. talking to family, they're so proud. I don't even want to burden them with anything. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. you, you just end up in this, you just end up floating. Just kind of just shifting and trying to figure things out. It's not a yeah. fun place to be in. Yeah. So I told people about that. And I think the benefit of that post is I communicate with like 20 people a week. Since then, I check in with 20 people that confided in me with their issues, calling right. and crying after I posted it. And I just check up. I set alarms to hit people up just to make mm. sure I check on them and I can check doing too. Right, right. It's a community. That's what mm. love is about. Yeah. So you love your brothers and your sisters and I'm glad I posted it. It took me a long time. God was just like, it's time. Because okay. I, I mean, I haven't been dealing with what I've been dealing with since at least when I finished it to fly. I finished it on my birthday, February 9th. Okay. So my last time needing any kind of, the antidepressants stopped relatively early in January, but like sleeping issues subsided like in the third week of February. I started getting some good solid hours of sleep. And then when I went out and started to feel good about compliments and stuff again, mm -hmm. I knew it was time to talk about it. Okay. Because I don't know who else is going through it. It can't just be me. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and it worked out, I like to think, you know? Right. And I know who I can turn to now. Okay. You know, okay. And uh, I was actually just having this conversation with a homegirl of mine back home about how difficult it is to talk to people who turn the entire conversation into something anti or about them. Like, right. the example she gives, she watches, she don't laugh. I ain't gonna tell her name, but she was like, oh, I'm not feeling well today. Man, I ain't never been sick. I ain't been sick since I was a kid. It's like, <laughs> what yeah. are you talking about? This ain't about you right now. Right, I right. got the flu. And then yeah. she told me that I cracked up. But <laughs> that's a real thing. It can be as little yeah. as that mm -hmm. or as big as, yo, I don't have nobody to talk to right now yeah. about what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Stop complaining. Mm -hmm. You have to go to set tomorrow. Yeah. That's yeah. tough. Yeah, that's tough. You know? So. You know, we just maneuvered. Yeah. God gives everybody their struggles. I'm honored that he trusted me with that struggle. I'm supposed mm -hmm. to use my platform to make it through. Right. And um, I won't let it overcome me. If it hits me, I gotta just shake it off and keep yeah. going, you know what I mean? Yeah. It can't be an excuse. Everybody has negative, and it can always be worse. Yeah. So if my demon is depression every now and then, yeah. Yeah. Take this, bring, it, bring it on, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's cool. Yeah. And do you have you have that support system? I know you mentioned that you have I certain people you. on on social media to reach out to and they check on you, but do you absolutely. have Absolutely, absolutely. And it's not like people didn't check up, it's just when they checked up it wasn't about checking up, not as if mm -hmm. every time mm -hmm. they hit me up, like, right. doing drill, right. baby and me, no, but sure. you know, always asking for stuff. And that's mm -hmm. the misconception too. Yeah, I'm on TV, but I'm broke. <laughs> I don't have nothing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I really don't make a lot of money like right now. One day I want to, but you know, it's it's not how people think it is. Right. Um, yeah. And now, when I went home after I posted it, I actually posted it and left the city. I took some very much needed advice and just ducked off for about a week. Mm -hmm. um, went back home, and my entire family was uh, my family that knew. Mm -hmm. My mother. For example, she, she got real honest. She was talking about how frustrated she was because I didn't tell her. Mm. But then understanding yeah. that she, her story is crazy. And I won't tell her story here yeah. right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. She's been she's been there. Mm -hmm. And she gets why you wouldn't want to. And now yeah. we have conversations there. She can understand that I'm going through a lot. Yeah. And we can talk now. So it's cool. If nobody else, I can always talk to her. I got my cousins, I got friends, my homeboys. I'm good. That's what's up. And you yeah. had a, a whole pizza. And yeah. But I fasted all day long. Okay. Well, there you so go. So I could pick out tonight. Okay. Because I never get to eat like this at all. Okay. So, well, we, we're glad that we could uh, accommodate you. I'm glad y'all accommodated me too, because this is <laughs> dope, man. I, this concept is really, really, really cool. Look, look at the water. How important the water looks. This is dope. You want some? No, I'm good. Right, sure. <laughs> I'm about to kill this thing. This is so cool. Dinner and dialogue, man. That's, yeah. that's what's that's up. Dope, man. Yeah. I like that. I enjoyed this entire thing. Thank you, guys. We're perfect. Perfect. Well, we, we're glad that you had an opportunity to stop by and uh, chop it up a little bit. Uh, very interesting, uh, insightful, smart, talented, good-looking young man. And I, I think you. that you're going. I think you're going places. Uh, I can just feel your energy. Uh, I'm going to just uh, speak that right now into existence. I will claim it. I receive it. We operate on a higher level of consciousness over here on Dinner and Dialogue. Yes. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, you're successful. God is dope. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, intentional. Guys, this went to my school. So okay. proud of them. Yeah. I've, I've seen that around, actually. Yeah. I don't, hey, look. Yeah. I, one of them. One of yeah. them went to my school. Okay. So, like, I, Indirectly support them because I don't know them on a level where it's like, yo, man, I got your shirt. Man. Right, just right. Like, well, yeah, I gotta say that. This we're gonna tag them and they're gonna loop, we're gonna loop them in and, and all that good stuff. So, I'm gonna reach good. out. I'm very yeah. proud of them. I like to see, I like to see business thrive, black business especially. So yeah, people. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, again, thanks for, for stopping by. You know, how can people, you know, follow you and and stay in touch because I know you got about 40,000 followers and I can maybe be able to get you, it's you know, another thousand. <laughs> you know, I was like, <laughs> no, but, but uh, you know, I just, it ain't, it ain't too many. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, Instagram and Twitter are both the same. My name is spelled very weird. For the most part, you can find me on IMDb, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter if you type in my first name. T E R, you got the words that's gonna bounce like on my finger. No, yeah, I'm gonna just try it. You can add it. Okay. T E R, <laughs> it's a real big space. This is frame, brother. T E R A Y L E. Type that in, you're gonna find it. But if you add a little underscore right here, that's my direct page. Terrell underscore Twitter, favorite. Twitter, Instagram. It doesn't matter. By the time you type in T E R A, anybody got that? Just, just, you'll see me right there. <laughs> all right? Terrell underscore, that's me, all that cool stuff. Awesome.